Um, so I want to start off by talking about uh, new enrollments. Um, so uh, new enrollments are those documents that we create within course sales um, and they allow us to um, to basically manage the manage the enrollments or, or manage the uh, bookings on the training courses. Okay, so I'm just going to go through the new enrollments. We're going to look at documents and we're going to look at course dates as well. So they'll be coming in a little bit later. So we're going to talk about adding an enrollment. I'm going to put selecting an enrollment type. These are the steps during the enrollment process, completing an enrollment and finding enrollments. I, I suspect most of you are experts in this, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but um, if you do have any specific questions, feel free to, um, to, to, to send them to me and to ask me about stuff because I'm quite happy to, um, to go through them, to ask any specific, answer any specific questions that you might have, okay? So I'll be looking out for the hands up, okay? So if you've got a question you want to ask, I'll also be, I'll have the chat open um, to receive any of those chat minutes, messages, cool. Okay, we're going to be talking about completing an enrollment and also finding enrollment. So that's using the find command of the course sales. So some of the terminology is important. Again, you're probably familiar with this. Course dates is an instance of a course with a date and a venue. A document is the record of the enrollment or the inquiry for a course. Okay, so a document can represent an actual firm booking or it can represent an inquiry. And course sales does have this ability to, um, to manage the, the sort of the, the sales process. So first of all, you've got someone who might be interested and secondly, you've got someone who you've confirmed is interested. Now, most of your settings will be set up so that when the USI is verified, that is when a document becomes registered. That is, they're no longer an inquiry, they're registered, meaning they now appear on the registration list. Some people have it configured slightly differently, so they want everyone on the registration list. So you may find that the moment a, a, a document is created, someone registers via the website, maybe that immediately becomes um, a, a registration rather than an inquiry. Um, Ribbon, ribbons is the area within course sales that we use to navigate. You can see I've got a, a screenshot there of just the ribbon area. You will find that at the top of course sales. Um, and as you click on the tabs, obviously you get a different set of icons. Now just be aware that what you see on the ribbon here may be different to what you see normally when you log in. It depends on your license and it also depends on your role. If you don't have access to something that you think you should, um, either talk to the person who administers your system or you can talk to me and I'll help, help you out with um, uh, finding out. You know, just do a bit of a chat um, in, the, um, in the support chat area. Okay, so just quickly here going through the way to, um, when you've lo logged into course sales, you can click on the courses tab, then click on the dates icon, and that'll take you straight to this ability to add a document or an enrollment onto a course. And you can see here, I've got a list of training courses, and let's see, I'll just do a bit of annotation here just so you can see what I'm looking at. Just held on a second while I grab the spotlight. Okay, so hopefully you can see that red dot there. Um, and you can see here we go, we click on the courses tab, we click on the dates icon, that gives us a list of the dates. We can filter over here on the left hand side, so you can choose a course category, location, etc. Go to advanced to select a few other settings, and then you can click on the plus sign to enroll someone on that particular course. Okay, so course sales does it a bit differently. We enroll person on the course as opposed to creating a student record first of all. So if I now go to the next slide. So the, the, once you've clicked on that green um, plus sign, you then get to this page, which again may look different depending on your, um, on your license. Um, but generally you have this contact list, which I've highlighted in orange there. Now that's listing people who have already enrolled on your courses, have attended the course, and therefore you already have their contact details. This is a way of quickly filling in the enrollment form, which we're gonna see just in a moment. You also select a document type. Now document types can vary depending on the license, the most common ones to have are initial enrollment or initial registration and registration or enrollment. Okay, those are the two main steps. Those are because an initial registration or initial enrollment 
will tend to be sending a message out to the student and asking the student to complete the enrollment. So you may just have the first con the first name, last name, and email address. In that instance, um, you need to uh, get the student to complete the enrollment. Um, so that's the, that's the common configuration within the system. Then you click on add. Now this, at this point, we've selected some sections here, the document type and the contact, or maybe not. If you don't, if the student is completely new, you don't have to select a contact. You can just click on add. So with regards to customization, so this is what I mentioned before, there are different types of enrollment, i.e. inquiry or initial registration. There are different enrollment forms as well, and these can be customized. So be prepared that some of the information you see, you see here might be different to the way you have the system configured. Also, menu items, like I've mentioned, can vary depending on your license. So those items in the ribbon can vary. Okay, so when you get, once you've clicked on that, um, that add button, you then come to this page, which shows you a bit of course information. So this is just to let you know what course you're enrolling the student on. You can then uh, change the process step by clicking on the little lightning bolt there. The lightning bolt brings you a drop down. Alternatively, you can actually type in the process step and automatically a list of those process steps matching what you've typed will appear in the list. And of course you can select send emails or not Usually when you um, add a student, so this is not a student being added from the, from the website, this is a student you're manually adding, usually the send emails is not ticked at this point. Um, and once we've filled out the information for the student, we're going to click on the add button um, and that'll take us to the point where we can look at all the students that are enrolled on the course. So this is where we go. If I scroll down a bit on that same page, you'll see that we have um, a few fields here. We've got an agent field. I know that agent field is used for those people who have uh, resellers or agents that need to be kept in contact. Agent field is sometimes used also for those people um, who are managing corporate clients. So a corporate client might be allocated as an agent. If you have the, um, if you have the zero plugin, then the agent is used to collate a number of, um, number of invoices or oh, a number of bookings onto the one invoice um, for the agent. Um, there are student contact details. Again, these can vary. Not everyone, for example, has this option to have just one name. Um, it's very easy to set that up. Um, and uh, if you're interested in having that as an option, just let me know um, and we can, can, we can give you guidance on how to configure that. Pretty easy to do. But this is the beginning of the form. You can see some here, some, there's some information here like finance status is a fairly unique and customized um, portion of the form. So you might not have that, but generally email, first name, last name are common Avetmas details that you'll find on all of your forms. Once you've filled out all the information you need to, you can click on add and that has added the enrollment and it's also applied that process step. So if you did select to send emails, an email would now be sent to those people. So if you need to find an enrollment, so that you've just completed an enrollment now, but if you need to find one, what you do is you click on the courses tab, click on documents, and then li this lists all of the documents, all of the enrollments on the course. Now on the left hand side here, we can actually filter. You can see again, we've got this uh, course category filter, location filter, um, and also a free text filter. This is where you might type in a name or an email address or anything effectively that is in a text field. So it might even be a location. Those sort of, any of that sort of information, you can type into this text area down here and that will filter the information on the right hand side um, to match the criteria. And don't forget about that advanced part of the filter. Now I see we've got a question here from Nisha. Um, so using the agent for invoicing to zero. Um, yes, we can definitely talk about that. I know that that's something that we are um, setting up for you guys um, at the moment. So. Let's go on to the next page. Okay, so that's the end of enrollments. Um, I want you guys to see if you can uh, create a new enrollment. In fact, um, if any, I'm sure a lot of you have already done this. So let's just get a hand up as to who would like to um, create a new enrollment and I'll create a breakout room for you. How's that? 